Hello everyone, today is Thursday the 16th of June. I don't know if you heard it, but Stephen Nolan did a fabulous interview on his morning radio show yesterday. Now, to tell you the truth, I'm not a big fan of the biggest show in the country. I generally don't listen to it at all, but I happened to catch the start of this interview, got drawn in, heard almost all of it, and found it really eye-opening. Nolan was talking to a young pharmacist who happens to be black. She recounted how, after she comes out from the pharmacy to answer customer questions, she is regularly asked if she would go and get the chemist. When she says she is the chemist, sometimes she's told by the customer that he or she would prefer to speak to a chemist who is from here. This young woman has lived here since she was 11, longer than she spent in South Africa, her country of origin. She studied all her pharmacy here. Her little brother was born here. How she is being treated is mind-boggling to me. She went on to discuss other encounters where race was clearly in play. On some occasions this involved not knowing very much about people of colour rather than ill will, but on others there was a cold, calculating, cruel, racist intent. On Tuesday I recommended watching a programme called The Unwanted, The Secret Windrush Files on iPlayer. It's really about how racist presuppositions change the focus on how we see things. It's like wearing a pair of glasses we're not even aware of. We think we're looking at reality just the way it is, but we're not, because what we see is determined by the lenses we're looking through. If you've not seen that program yet, do find it and watch it. It is great. I also told you on Tuesday that our preacher this Sunday will be the Reverend Nibs Stroop. As I said, Nibs was minister at Oakhurst Presbyterian, an intentionally multiracial church in Atlanta, for over 30 years. He will offer insights about understanding and beginning to overcome racism from his experience. Let me tell you a little about Oakhurst and one of the things he and his wife Caroline did when they worked there as co-pastors. In some ways it was a small thing. In one way it was a quirky thing, but it showed that black people were genuinely welcome and that thinking could change. So Oakhurst was formed as a congregation in the early 1920s in one of the leafy suburbs of Atlanta. By the mid-1960s it had grown to be a thriving 900 member all-white church. Then things began to change and the change had one unusual source. In 1966 the Atlanta Braves baseball team built a new stadium close to downtown Atlanta. To do this black people were displaced from their homes. Some moved out to the Oakhurst district. Guess what happened? When white folk saw them coming, those whites moved further out. This became what is called white flight. As a result, by the early 1980s, when Nibs was called as minister, the Oakhurst membership was down to about 80 people. This was made up of long-time members, plus some newly arrived in the neighbourhood black people who wanted to be part of a local congregation. Now to that small quirky thing Nibs and Caroline did that was really very important. When they looked at the church, they noticed there was a stained glass window of what we would call a classically white Jesus. With no money to possibly change the image, which dominated the sanctuary, what they did was get a long ladder and a big felt tip pen. The parts of Jesus not concealed by his flowing white robe, that is, his feet, 
His hands and his face, overnight, became much darker and much browner. In its way, this signalled an important change of mindset. Jesus wasn't white, which as a Palestinian Jew he probably actually wasn't. Even more significantly, symbolically, whiteness wasn't going to take precedence and be seen as the norm. Oakhurst was really open to African Americans living in the district. Since then, while Oakhurst has not reached the size it once was, it has grown considerably both numerically and in depth of spirituality. Down the years, everyone has been committed to a vision of all people sharing in the life of Christ, to creating a multicultural congregation, to shaping worship and fellowship open to all, and to growing together in faith and understanding. For me, Oakhurst was so wonderfully important because it was much more than blacks and whites remaining satisfied with sitting beside one another for an hour or two on a Sunday morning. Yes, services could be long. It was about breaking down presuppositions, assumptions and barriers, and living a different way in a deeply divided society. It was about understanding the deep, dark, tangled roots of division and struggling to make things better, both locally and globally. An affirmation of faith written by Oakhurst puts the journey well. It says, Oakhurst Presbyterian Church is a community of diversities. We come from different places, from different economic levels, from different countries of the world. We are a church in the city. Our life has known the movement of the city. We were once all of one kind. Then our church became multiracial and we felt small and insignificant. And our people were afraid. Afraid of ourselves from different races and afraid of ourselves from different cultures. The faithfulness of those who stayed and those who came gave us courage. By God's power we have been given grace through what we thought was our weakness. In the midst of our fears God has surprised us and blessed us. The diversity which we feared has empowered us to confront God's truth in the world. In Jesus Christ the dividing walls of hostility have been broken down. Though we are born into diverse earthly families, our life together at Oakhurst has led us to affirm that we are called to be one family of humanity through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. The affirmation ends, from many threads, one tapestry. From many streams, one river. From many branches, one tree. We are Oakhurst. I'm going to say amen to that. Come to church on Sunday. Listen to names. Invite your friends. Until then, God bless and bye for now.